Hi everybody, Lemkin here. Today we're going to be talking about setups with Law in Tekken 8. I'm going to be talking about some uh, some of the more conventional, uh, traditional setups with Law. I'm going to be talking about some um, not so well-known setups, some more special setups, high-level setups. Um, there's going to be we're going to be talking about DSS setups and uh, some slide setups and stuff as well. So if you haven't watched uh, the videos I did on DSS, uh, my DSS guide and my slide tech uh, guide. I suggest you watch those first because those this video kind of assumes that you know uh, a little bit about that stuff uh, before we go into the setups. Anyway, we're going to start with some grab setups today. So Law actually has a pretty good grab uh, game, always has uh, had, had it. So uh, he has a, a 1 plus 3 grab. These are his uh, generic grabs. This is broken with either one or two. And then he has this uh, three plus four grab. This is also broken uh, with the uh, one or two. This is a floor break grab as well. And it uh, switches sides. Then he has uh, a grab from DSS, which is up, forward, uh, one plus two. This. And these all do uh, 35 damage, by the way. Like uh, most grabs do. And then he has a... Up forward 1 plus 2 in the neutral, which is this grab right here. But this has a special input where if, uh, let me see, if we go to his grabs, oh, all techniques, you see this is a headlock, headlock punch. And then it has the headlock drop right here. Which is, has a, a little bit of a different input. You have to really fast, you have to input 1 plus 2, 1, 2, 1 plus 2, like this. You see? But there's actually an easy way to get this grab every time, and I'm going to show you today. By the way, I have this is my controller setup, if you if you want to check it out real quick. And uh, if I go to my but, uh, button check, you can see that I have my uh, 1 plus 2 mapped to L1. So all I have to do is press L1, and I get the 1 plus 2. Okay? So what you do to get the... Uh, this more damaging grab option. This grab by itself, it does 35 damage. As you can see on the damage counter uh, in the little gray box there. But if you do the um, the more advanced version, the one where he drops him to the floor, it actually does more damage, you see. We'll do 40 damage, so 5 extra damage. And this is a flow, fr flow break as well, meaning that it will also give you a launcher on the uh, into the stratosphere into the stratosphere stage, and if you just notice my uh, input uh, uh, command history here, I just mashing one plus two. I'm mashing L1 as soon as I hit this grab, Oop. and I get this uh, because it will buffer the input one plus two one two one plus two. So that that's an easy way to get this grab every time. Really good again on floor break stage or into the stratosphere. You you'll even get a combo here. Um, so uh, that, that's a, that's a really good option for 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 Law to have in this game. Um, and then he has uh, his forward uh, one plus uh, uh, sorry for his forward two plus uh, three. This right here. And this is also a really good grab. I'm gonna tell you why in a second. Um, also, he has, of course, his uh, side grabs and his uh, back turn grabs and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to talk too much about those, but all you need to know in terms of those, uh, because you're not going to be hitting them often, but all, all you need to know here is that if you get someone in the back with the uh, Shaolin spin kicks, if you're fast enough with the DSS, you can get a guaranteed DSS up forward 1 plus 2 grab like this. See how it's a two-hit combo and everything. They cannot escape if if you somehow sidewalk someone if they back turn to you for some other reason, and you, and you, I mean, I would recommend going for a launching combo. Of course, you get more uh, damage that way. But if you for some reason uh, feel inclined to, you can do DSS uh, challenge spin kicks DSS into. Uh... See, I wasn't fast enough there actually, but that works. So that's all you need to know about the back turn grabs and all that. But let's talk about this forward. 2 plus uh, 3 right here. This is a really good grab. This is actually, in my opinion, one of the better grabs in the game. As you can see, it has a very, very unorthodox grab animation. It's probably the most unorthodox uh, grab animation in the entire game right here. And usually, when people try to break your throws, people who have excellent throw breaks, they will react to throws with this animation, where they lead with their left arm. Are uh, usually, If they're command throws, they're usually broken with one. 
not not always. There is a couple exceptions, but that's how it usually is. And if they lead, if it's a command throw that leads with the uh, the right arm, they're usually broken with two. And if they if it's a command grab that's uh, um, that has this animation where he leads with both arms, same times, it's usually broken with the one plus two. Now again, it's not always necessary like that. There is a couple exceptions. For example, King's giant swing uh, has this animation, but it's a one break. This animation right here is none of those. This is its own animation, as you can see. It almost looks like a kick, right? So this is, uh, by muscle memory, this is really, really hard for even for people with excellent throw breaks to uh, react to this animation right here. And this is a command throw. This is a one break. A I'll show you real quick what I mean. We'll do... Uh, um, yeah, we'll do like this. Oh yeah, and by the way, today we're not gonna be going through uh, obviously every single uh, like setup uh, you can do with law because I don't want this video to be like 12 hours long. We're just gonna do like the mo more important ones, the ones the ones I feel like should uh, be highlighted. Again, you probably already have your own uh, your own setups and stuff already, so I'm just gonna go through stuff that are like not so well known that you probably haven't seen before, stuff that I use and stuff that I really like at a uh, uh, stuff that I think works at a beginner, advanced, and, uh, and pro level. Alright, so let's see. You will see this. See, see, that's a one break right there. If I try to press two or something, it is not broken. Alright, let's see. Um... Now, the thing about this grab is that most grab, if you, if you look down at the bottom of this little gray box I have on my screen, it says distance from opponent, right? It starts out by default at two. I think, I don't know if this is two meters or two feet, two yards, whatever you want to call it. But the, the unit of measuring is two right here. That's, that's the, the, the starting position of the opponent. You will see a normal grab, it will whiff at a range two. You see, after the first, he edges ever so slightly closer to the opponent while doing an attack, right? Right now we're at uh, one, uh, we're at 170 after the grab, pretty much, right? And this will connect at 170, the normal grabs. Now the, these uh, grab animations, a uh, little bit, um, they will connect, they have a little bit less range. You see, they will connect after two of these, we're at 130, pretty much, or 140. So this will connect reliably at about 140, 150. Now this animation right here will not. It will connect at 120, you see? 110 to 120. So the, the downside of this grab right here being hard to break and hard to react to is that the range is very, very poor on this grab. You, you have to be pretty much at range 1. Uh, to, to land this, to have a chance to land this grab. You see, I'm, I'm right in front of him now. My, my kick is even like, looks like it's connecting to his uh, shin right there, but I, I'm still not gra getting the grab. There you go. So that's the downside of this grab. Now, how to mitigate this uh, into a setup is something I really like to do. You've seen this, uh, uh, if you've seen me st uh, on stream or if you've seen some of my gameplay, I like, to do af I like to do it after a heat engager because heat engagers put you at range one, you see? After the uh, animation is done, they put you at range one, actually a little uh, further away. If, if I mash it out, right here, you see it will put me at range 150 or something, and I will whiff it, actually. But if, if I wait until the end of this animation right here, I'm at range one, and it, this will connect every single time. Now, I, I know uh, this the animation makes kind of makes it look like this is a low kick or something, but this is still a high. You can see the hit properties here. It is a high, so if they duck, they will they will duck this. So that, that's what they can do in a situation like this. We'll duck this grab right here. But again, after, after a heat engager, this is where I usually like to use it. And like 9 out of 10 times, it hits every time. <laughs> it's, it's a really good after a heat engager. Give it, give it, a, give it a try. I promise you this will work uh, like most, on most people. Alright, one, one thing to also note about this, this grab animation, the recovery is quite quick. So uh, a little gimmick you can use sometimes is that you can use this from further away like this. If you want to try and enforce a whiff punish, this is a good setup as well. You can do you can do this and then some people they will try to like uh, punish you or something. Or they, they will, they, before they realize what you're actually doing, they will have press a button and then you... Uh, 
the recovery of this is so quick that you can actually do this, make them whiff, and then just punish instantly with 3 plus 4 4. Give that a try as well. Now, in terms of other grab setups, uh, when you want to set up your grabs, you usually want to do it in a way that you are in plus frames so that they kind of have to block or that they pr most likely will block. Um, let's go to. Yeah, uh, let's see, standing block. In a, in, a, in a situation like this where you're where you're uh, in plus frames your opponent they may challenge you of course but in a scenario like this they are most likely to block and that's when you want to throw in your grabs especially like this when he's forced crowd tried um you, you you don't want them to challenge you because you don't want to get counter hit or anything and you don't want them to uh, try and duck your uh, your grab as well. You don't want to uh, be in a situation where they they read a low and then they dog it by accident, right? So you can do something something like uh, something like this, right? Um, or you can do uh, a lot of. This is where the DSS stuff comes into uh, play, right? Because uh, DSS is prone to give you plus frames, um, and of course, of course, we have a grab built in the one plus two grab uh, built into the DSS now. So you can you can you can do setups like this, or this, or something like this. You also saw plus seven on block here, right? I wouldn't recommend doing something like this because you have minus four on this one, right? Uh, but you get the drift. This one you could do, but this is kind of risky because um, most people at uh, advanced or uh, level play or higher they will kind of duck this because it's a this is a free highest row, right? And they might expect the uh, triple Shaolin spin kick, which is also pretty high. So most play players are going to duck you here and punish you. But uh, just know that you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, there's, there's just a bunch of uh, different options here. The poison arrow option here is a really good one as well, because you're plus five. Like this, right. What I like to do is I like to, I like to do like, uh, get my plus frame to engage them with the dragon hammer like this, and then force crouch. And then go into while standing four, DSS something like this. The uh, I like the forward free one as well. Yeah, there's there's just uh, so, so so many options here. Uh, back one is one I really like to use. This is another good uh, place to uh, to sprinkle in your grab setups. Is when you have strings that uh, that uh, and that you can delay or or uh, choose to not end right. Uh, and then you're, you're hoping for what you want is you want your opponent to think that you might get, that you are going to end the string, but instead of ending the string, you're actually going to cancel the string and then go into a grab. So back one, for example, has three uh, hit extensions. There's back one, back one two, and back one three. And this is a really common mind game with law because on counter hit, this is all this whole string is guaranteed right here, and it is a heat engage, so it's really good. It's minus 14 on block, and it does have some pushback. Um, so what what you want to do is you can you can DSS from back one and you can DSS from back one to uh, two. So you could do something like this. You you want them to block, thinking that the second hit is coming, and and they they most likely are going to block here if they know anything about law, of course, because they know that if they get if they get clipped by the second hit on a counter hit, then the last hit here is guaranteed, and they eat a shit ton of damage, and you get a free heat and get heat engage, and now you got a free mix up as well and everything, right? So, um, they are most likely going to block here, which means that you can. There's a good chance you can get a free grab setup with one of these. So that that's how I recommend using these grabs right here. And remember, the heat engager is also a good place to throw in a grab, but you don't want to be too obvious with it. Uh, a lot of people like to do the heat, uh, sorry, the grabs after the heat engagers, but. Um, it, it, that also means that most people are now ready for it. So they are, they're either gonna like be ready with their throw breaks, or they're gonna uh, try and duck it uh, straight up, right? Um, and there is some more stuff to talk about here, but again, I don't want this video to be like six hours long, so I'm not gonna talk about every single setup in every single scenario. But this is kind of like how I like to use my grab setups. Oh, another one. This is a really cool one. Um, I'm not gonna take credit for inventing this one or anything, but I have been doing this setup since Tekken 5. It's one that I found myself. I have seen a couple other law players do it, but it's very, very rare. What I like to do is so uh, you can do the fake flip by doing one, two, and then up three, 
Up forward three, sorry. Like this, right? And up forward three, four, into this kick right here. And this is a launcher on normal hit, of course. Now, he used to have a, a kick that was sli slightly faster in Tekken 7 and in previous games. So this has been uh, nerfed a little bit, but the range is way better on this one. And the frames, uh, it used to be safe and now it's minus 12, so it's not so good anymore. But you can still do this. It comes out a little bit slower as well, I think. Yeah, 15. I think it used to be like 13 or something. But um, the thing is, a lot of people, they know this string. Especially legacy players, because this, uh, this string has been in the game for uh, many, many years. So they're gonna, when they see this, uh, most uh, into beginner, uh, not beginner, they, they don't even know the string. They're gonna like jab you out of it uh, by accident. But most like uh, intermediate and advanced players, they're gonna uh, block right here. So what you do is, you don't have to finish the string. You can just do something like this, and then uh, and then grab them, right? What I like to do is, um, oh yeah, I neglected to mention this before. He has a forward, forward, three plus four grab as well. This is arguably his most important grab because this is actually, let's see, this is actually a launcher, right? So that's that's a really that that's a grab you should be going for, especially in a situation like this. You're gonna make them block or try and uh, block this hit, right? But instead you're gonna you're not gonna finish the string, you're gonna do this. This right here. If, again, if you've seen me stream, if you see me play, or my gameplay, right, you, you see me do this setup a million times and it, and it works real well. Even against like uh, advanced and uh, pro level players. And this is a very rewarding grab to, uh, to, 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 to land as well, as you can see, right. Um, now, one there is one other scenario I want to show real quick uh, on hit. Uh, so his 10 frame Punisher is this 112, like this, and it gives you gives you plus six on hit. So this is a really good opportunity to throw in a uh, setup as well. Now Law he can go into DSS from 112 by holding forward. So now you're plus seven instead. So in, here you can sprinkle in some uh, some setups right here. And you could go for an up forward 1 plus 2 grab. But what I recommend and what I do a lot of the time is I do 1, 1, one 2 and on hit. I wouldn't do this on block by the way because this is minus on block. Uh, disadvantageous on block. But on hit I would do something like this. You see? And in this game you can actually buffer the inputs quite a bit. Uh, buffering an input, what it means is that you're actually doing the input before the animation of the previous attack is uh, finished and it will still remember your input and still execute it once that uh, first move is finished. So what, uh, if you look at my command history, I'm inputting this forward forward 3 plus 4 uh, even before my 112 animation is even over. Not too soon because then it won't reg register. You have to find that uh, uh, go into practice mode a little bit and try this out for yourself. You have to find that uh, golden uh, like timing, right? Let's see. You see? My command history here. Before the first, uh, before the 112 has finished recovering, I'm already inputting 11 one, one, uh, 3 plus 4. It's the same thing with this. You see? So it comes out. Uh, because this this grab animation right here would most likely be delayed due to the uh, execution requirements because it's a forward forward input and all that stuff. But that is mitigated by the fact that you're buffering the input. So it co despite that, it comes out uh, immediately, like after uh, uh, the previous animation has uh, concluded, right? And that's how that's that's why uh, these grabs can be useful after uh, setups like these. Alright, so that's a little bit uh, about all of these grab setups with Law. Again, there is more of them. I would like to talk uh, more about them, but the, we're going to talk about a, a bunch of different setups and different scenarios and stuff uh, in this video. So I'm not going to go into all uh, setups in all scenarios from, from all attacks and all that stuff. But just know that these exist, and you can also try and play around with these and make up your own. Uh, if, you, if you found some really good ones that you think I should know about, uh, you're more than welcome to let me know in the comment section or wherever on stream if you find me there. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, let's talk about some more setups. Alright, let's talk about some, some slide uh, setups right here. 
Now, I've I've talked a little bit about some of these. We're going to go a little bit into into more detail about them in this video. So if if, if you've seen my slide tech video, uh, you should be good to go here. But if you haven't, I remember uh, I recommend that you go and watch that right now and then return to this video because that's really going to help you with these setups. So the main thing about slide setups is that you want to do them in a way that you are uh, in from moves that already put you in crouch. It makes it much easier to execute uh, because the slide input is executed from crouch of course um so uh, to give you an example of this if you do a dragon hammer which is uh, forward one plus two we'll do like this um you can hold uh, down and he will actually end in crouch right or if you do down uh, one if you hold down he will end the animation in crouch as well the same goes for banana peel uh, and a bunch of other moves, right? And it is when you are already in crouch that you can really fastly input the uh, the slide like this. So what what you can do is, um, if you, if your opponent is expecting like a dragon hammer or something for DSS uh, setup or something, what you instead can do you can do this and just go straight into a slide. You can do a down one, go straight into a slide. You can do your banana peel, go straight into a slide, or you can go something from back turns straight into a slide. Now, uh, this is a really good one. I like to do this as well. You do back four, and if you hold, this is back four right here. It's a good homing move, by the way. Um, and on a hit, this is, can actually be a good uh, grab uh, setup. I wouldn't recommend on block, but um, you should know that when you're back turned. Uh, you, you can you can turn around in in a couple different ways. You can press forward. He will turn around like this. You can press back. He will turn around like this. This way, he will create a little bit of distance between you and your opponent. And you can, if you look at my command history, you can press down, back, and he will recover like this. You see. And this creates a lot of space between you and your opponent. This way. Now, what I like to do is. This this is a excellent way of creating a uh, forcing a whiff right here. You are minus four by the way, so so be aware of that. But uh, what I like to do, and you've seen this again, if I if you've seen me play, I like to do two back two something like this, and then I create space between me and my opponent. Then I'm already in crouch here, and I will hit them with the slide. A lot of the time, people will they will from back turn with law, they will expect a down back free or sorry a down free. Generic down three or a down four, something like this. This was like a pretty common setup in uh, in Tekken Seven, but this mix-up uh, is a f it doesn't really exist anymore in uh, in, t in Tekken Eight. Um, but this is still still a brilliant uh, s slide setup right here. Um, and again, I've I've talked a little bit al al already about the yeah. G in generally, you you just want to be be doing like your your slides from. Uh, from from crouching moves or moves that put you in crouch, you do this one as well. This this will also put you the fake flip will also put you in crouch after if you hold down after uh, doing it right. That's that's another setup you can do right here. Right. So yeah, that's that's a. Uh, that's that's a couple uh, slide setups right there that that I really recommend you try. Um, so yeah, give 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 them a go and uh, let me know what you think about them. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention uh, that I'll, I'll go over real quick is that when you are grounded, you can stand up by pressing. Uh, you can pr press up and then, but if you immediately press and hold down after getting up, you'll actually recover in crouch from uh, from uh, uh, laying position as well. You can do this from laying uh, with face up or face down, it doesn't really matter. And you can do it after a, a side roll, left or right, it doesn't even matter. Uh, something like this. And so what what you can do in a situation like this, and you can, you can stand up into crouch and then do it directly a slide like this, like instant slide from uh, get up. This is a really, really, uh, really hard for people to, to react to. And it's uh, n like, trust me, no one expects this. What you can also do, and I had to record a little movement from my opponent here in order for this to hit. If you do the down free from face up position, the toe kick, you can, you can, he will do an automatically roll back, and fr that roll back recovers in crouch as well. The same, same with the, um, let me see. 
uh, the, f the front row re recovers in crouch, but what you can do, what I like to do from this, uh, the toe kick is this. There you go, that's a slide setup as well. This, this will hit like most of the time as well, trust me. This is really, really good. Really good get up uh, technique here, so I just want to go over that real quick as well. I, I kind of had to go to an open stage to show you this because I want to show you one more slide setup here. This is one that I do a lot, uh, actually. You and you again, you know, you've known about this if you've seen me play. Is that when I do a combo? So let's just do the stable combo right here. You don't have to do this one. It's just an example, right? With the blue sparks on on one, my stable combo, I get 67 damage, right? Now what you can do is uh, the, uh, what I like to do is I like to end this combo instead of uh, ending it with the DSS uh, the Shaolin Shaol Spin Kicks into the Legend Kick I like to use uh, the Dragon Hammer and then automatically go into Crouch and then finish off with a slide uh, so uh, let's see do this instead of uh, 67 damage we get 54 and then the uh, slide here which is going to be scaled a little bit so it's going to do 16 damage so um yeah, we got, we're gonna be doing 54 plus 16. You get uh, you get 70 damage instead of 67. So you get free extra damage. Like this is assuming that they stay on the ground, of course, because they it is not guaranteed. They can stand up and hold down to block the slide, but trust me, no, most people are not going to do that. You're gonna hit this a lot, um, th which is why I use it so much. Uh, but this is kind of like the best case scenario, right? If if they stay on the ground right here and just eat the slide for 16 damage. Now, um, let's see. What, what's gonna happen most of the time, though, is that a lot of people they're gonna do a backwards Yukemi after that spike uh, combo. And it is this recovery animation right here. That's what a lot of people will do, and this backwards Yukemi it will put them in standing position again. And now you know from standing position, the slide doesn't scale in damage anymore. Boom, 20 damage, and you get uh, the guaranteed, of course if you're fast enough here, you get the guaranteed non-chuck hit as well. So it's 54, 20, 16 damage right there. So that's uh, that's 36 extra damage on top of those 54, it makes it 90 damage. So if this all works out in your favor, right, instead of getting, instead of getting the 67 damage, You, you get 90 damage, so you get 23 extra damage from, from doing this if it works out. Now, again, uh, there's, a, there's a chance they won't, you can me. So you get the free extra damage if they stay on the ground, right? But the, the, this is a very powerful uh, setup option as well, I just wanted to let you know. And uh, again, you'll probably see me do it, so now I'm explaining why I'm doing it. Okay, so let's talk about a couple wall setups right here. Now, uh, one that I really like is uh, Law has a string uh, that's uh, called one two two one plus two. This one right here, and this last hit is very delayable. So what you can do is you can catch people off guard. You can try catch them interrupting you. Uh, if they think you, you finish a string, you're gonna uh, you're gonna really delay that last hit and and make it uh, hit them uh, while they're pressing. Like this, you see. And then you can if if you land this at the wall, you get a devastating wall combo. See, that's a pretty big damage. Um, now another, what you're mostly looking for at the wall is that you want your opponent to duck at the wall. Because once they duck at the wall, you can hit them with a back free. Let's see. That's the optimal combo for this, I think. Back free, this is a pretty slow one though. You can hit them with the back four. Back four free like this. I recommend again that you can do a couple like this, or I recommend doing sidestep like this. I'll give you a little bit extra damage. This is a pretty cool uh, combo, wasp resplat combo right here. What you do is you sidestep to the left and then you press back one, two, two to resplat them on the wall. And then you walk up, you do your, you get your bound uh, with the down two free, and then you get your uh, ender combo with sidestep uh, 1 plus 2, uh, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1. Uh, so, yeah, something like this. I sidestepped a little bit too much there. Okay. There we go. Boom. Boom. 
Oh, that whiff for some reason. I guess that's maybe a little bit unreliable. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Um, so yeah, basically you, you want your opponent to duck at the wall so that you can get... Uh, you can splat them on the wall. There's a couple of, uh, different ways you could do this, but I recommend uh, back four. Uh, back four free. Back three is more safe. Because this, the second hit of this string is a high, so they can duck it if they block it. Um, uh, so what what you can do to make your opponent duck, there's a bunch of different uh, ways to do it, but what I like to do is I like to do sometimes back two into down, uh, into back four or uh, back three. Again, back three is a little bit slower, so it's a, uh, you have a smaller chance of hitting that. Uh, but again, the back four is more risky. Uh, you could do hop kick uh, if you want to take less risk, I guess, or uh, uh, up forward uh, four, uh, the flip kick. Um. So yeah, you, you have a bunch of diff different options. But the thing is, with back two, it has a couple of different extensions. This one, the second hit of this one is a high, and the second hit of junkyard is a low. So most people, they're going to try and low parry or duck uh, the second hit after back two. So if you can make them duck by doing this, then you can do back two and then straight into uh, back four free. Now again, I would be careful using this setup with the back four free uh, at, at advanced or pro level play because uh, most people they're gonna fussy duck. They're gonna uh, yeah they're gonna fussy duck uh, that the second hit after this and then they're gonna stand straight up again and then they're gonna duck the second hit of this and launch you. <laughs> so it gets progressively more risky at the higher level you go. Uh, but you can also do um, something like. Uh, what I would do more at higher levels, if I, I will try to threaten with the slide, and I'll do like uh, I'll do like while standing one, uh, two, something like this, right? Or I will just straight up uh, do a, fry, a slide threaten and then into this, right? And um, so that's that's an, basically again to summarize, you want uh, you can find you can play around with this a little bit, find what you work best, uh, what what works best for you is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, see how you can make your opponent duck in certain ways, and then just uh, go for go for the, the wall splat. So that's 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 uh, basically wall setup 101. Again, there's a, a little bit more to this, uh, but we're we're trying to make a, a little bit shorter video. I can see the timestamp is already going up right now, so uh, I'm trying to keep it brief. <laughs> so so sorry. Another wall setup I will mention real quick is one I like to do a lot as well. So if if my opponent has uh, figured me out in terms of like I should already shown you like the the, the slide setups with the you can backwards you can me here that works at the wall as well of course you get the same uh, you get the same setup basically but what you can do at the wall is now now it's actually a 50 50 pretty much because you can after you wall splat them spike them into the wall if they backwards you can me and and try to low block because they're expecting you to slide maybe let's say you've done this a couple times uh, during the match. So now you're reading that they're probably gonna catch on to you at some point, right? So what you can do at the wall is instead of doing this setup, what you now do is you spike them into the wall backwards you came and then you hit them with the the poison arrow. And this wall, poison arrow wall slash at the wall, it has it gets pretty big damage. So something like this. You see? Really devastating. That's another setup I like to use at the wall. Very good, very good. This next setup I'm about to show you is highly, highly specialized. This is not something I would necessarily recommend you try and do, uh, but if you really want to swag out on your opponent, this is the setup you do right here. This is really, really cool. So right now I have the uh, CPU set to spring attack, meaning that as soon as it uh, has active frame, as soon as it can press anything, it will do a, a spring attack. Now, you can do. You, this is a wall setup. What you can do is if you get a high splat, uh, or a medium splat, even. You see, you see how long the uh, anim the recovery animation is. He has to slide all the way down the wall from here to here to there. Um, even just that, that 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 last part, right? He can't do the spring kick. He can't press anything until he slid all the way down and hit the ground with his head. You see, as soon as his back and his head hits the ground, boom! That's when he can press. So there's a long recovery here. What you can do is instead of ending your combo with the traditional uh, legend kick ender right here. You can do, you can do this. Four two back uh, two. You see, there's a long animation where you're back turned and he can't really do anything, right? So 
Let me just show you the setup right here. Boom, boom, boom. DSS. You see? Isn't that sick? <laughs> so, uh, let me explain to you what you just saw here. Because this is kind of insane. Shout out to Just Frame James, by the way, to, for coming out with, up with this setup. What what I what just happened here is that once he's uh, as he was sliding down the wall, I ended the combo with instead of the DSS uh, Legend Kick or uh, Dragon Cannon Ender, I ended the the wall combo with DSS forward two back two, like this. So I'm now wall. Uh, so, sorry, I'm now back turned against him as he is uh, sliding down the wa wall and can't press anything. Now, law from key charge. Uh, Let's see, when you're back turned with Law, if you press, try to press, uh, he has this move where he goes uh, like this, it's up forward 1, right? Now if you try to uh, press anything back turned, like 1 or up forward 1, he will just automatically uh, like turn back and go like this. If you uh, look at my inputs here, he'll do something like this. It's not really possible to do, but Law has this thing where he can cancel his key charge. Let's see. If I just spam one while doing the key charge, he will cancel the key charge by doing this uh, this eye jab right here, and this also works back turned. You see, and this uh, jab animation it has a lot of forward momentum. You see, so the reason this works is you splat your opponent on the wall, you go back turn by doing forward two back two. Oh, sorry, try that again. Like this, key charge, and then go forwards. And if they if they get do a spring kick or if they get up and do an attack, try to uh, because they're gonna try and punish you in the back. Then they end up right behind you. But because you you key charge, uh, in case you didn't know, once you key charge, you get counter hit properties automatically. And this his back turn two is a counter hit launcher. This right here, that's a launch right there. So you get if they whiff in front of you now, you get a guaranteed launcher. Isn't that sick? So that's how this works, the setup actually. Boom, boom, boom. Key charge, get the counter hit properties, make them whiff, boom, and now you get a free combo right at the wall. That's a really, really cool setup right there. I just had to show you that. I very briefly, let's talk about the down to free setups. This right here. This is some, probably something you see from law players a lot. And I don't like to use this too much because, as you probably know, it's, uh, it's minus 15 on block. So it's very risky. You will get launched for uh, uh, getting this block, uh, at least if you're playing against someone decent. So it is way too risky for me to use all the time. I try. I do use it. Not that I never use it, but you have to be very, very sparsome when when you use it. And I try to. My recommendation would be only use this if you think you have a hard read when your opponent's gonna press. So use it as a counter hit tool and not a setup tool necessarily. But if you absolutely want some setups with this and uh, which probably to be fair uh, they do work a lot in lower ranks but i still advise against using this even in lower ranks because it's going to become a bad habit for you and it's going to be ha become hard to break uh, once you go into higher uh, level play you're going to get punished so hard for it and you're going to lose so many fights if you if you preemptively just do too many down to free setups right but if you absolutely want some i'll, I'll tell you that uh, let's see um, uh, I, I could recommend something like uh, up forward 1 free into down 2 free. Uh, you could do uh, 4 up free into down 2 free. Something like that. But what I really recommend you do is in, in, instead of doing the down 2 free, just do down 2, right? Like this. And then into slide or something. That's. that's uh, it's, it's, you you will get of course less damage from doing a slide uh, in, into a nunchuck than you will from getting a full launcher right. But this is uh, it's a much higher reward for much less risk. So I, I would I would advise you on doing something like that instead. If if you absolutely have to do down two setups, I would I would stray away from doing down to three, and I would just do down uh, two into slide mixups instead. That's uh, th that's that's what I would do. So you could you could do if you still want to go if you absolutely want to go risky you could do a slide setup into wild standing two or just uh, uh, something like that right um, so won't talk too much uh, more about that but I just wanted to let you know that that stuff exists uh, and the uh, kind of the pros and cons surrounding it 
So there you go. Let's talk about something that I really love, which is uh, jump over tech. So jump over tech existed in previous Tekken games as well, although it has changed a little bit uh, in this game. But uh, so jump over tech is, in case you didn't know, is when you jump over your attack and you get a guaranteed hit in the back. This works well in a bunch of different scenarios, but it works especially well if your opponent trying to do a get up kick or something. So what happens is basically you jump over them. Oh, let's see. You have to get the timing right, of course. Boom, something like this, and you get down, uh, down one, generic down one. Uh, dick jab or crouch jab as it is also known in the back with law it will guarantee a while standing four it comes out at 11 frames so what you can do is something like this boom this is all guaranteed if you hit them in the back there you go and there's a couple different ways you could do this you could do it from dragon tail I'm not sure what uh, exactly is the optimal combo here, but there's a couple different uh, ways of doing it. You can do it from a normal, uh, normal hit, uh, non shock attack. Like that. Or you can do it, as I found out, you can do it from the counter hit uh, down four. There you go. That's uh, a little bit of jump over tech there for you. Again, you can try. Uh, different things see what works best for you if you want to do some jump over tick this is how to do it so there you go all right so this has been a bunch of different setups uh, that you can do with law in Tekken 8 now of course there is an infinite number of setups you could do out there i could talk i go i could go on for hours and hours and hours about setups but i didn't want this video to be too long so we're gonna end it here but i hope that you got inspired by this i hope that you found some of this uh, useful or helpful I hope that you found something that you haven't seen before. Um, uh, so yeah, ba ba basically, um, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I've certainly had fun making it. Uh, there's probably going to be more in the future about setups alone. Uh, because th again, this game is so new that uh, we haven't had that much time with the game yet. I haven't had that much time with the game yet. So I'm sure there's going to be so much more that we're going to discover in the future that is going to be new to Tekken 8. Um, so if that stuff presents itself i of course am going to make more videos about it and uh, and show you guys uh, what what we find um but until then i uh, hope you have a good time i hope you have some good games out there i hope you get that that promo match uh, now that you uh, you have some more setups to 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 help you along your way um but until the, we we meet again i will have uh, i'll see you next time i hope you have a good one bye